The Bernstein Bears and the Trouble with Grown Ups. <clears throat> grown ups and cubs get quite a surprise when they see themselves through other eyes. Even though it was bright and clear outside the Bears family treehouse, there was a storm brewing inside. For a while, it would be wrong to say that the cubs and grown-ups are natural enemies. It would be fair to say that cubs and grown-ups sometimes don't get along. Where's the rest of my paper? thundered angry Papa Bear, storming into the living room. It didn't take him long to find Brother Bear in the sports section. I just borrowed it, said Brother. Papa snatched it up and plumped it down in his easy chair. Brother wandered into the kitchen looking for sympathy from Mama Bear. Gee, he said, what's eating him? Your father looks forward to his evening paper, Mama said, and he has a perfect right to be annoyed when half of it is missing. And furthermore, I'll thank you not to refer your father as him. She stomped out of the kitchen. Why not? He is a him, isn't he? Gosh, said brother, what's eating her? What was eating Mama was Sister Bear. She had been on the phone with Lizzie Bruin for almost an hour. But Mama, she protested when she was told to say goodbye. Don't but Mama me, she said Mama Bear. This is not your private phone. You've had all day to talk to Lizzie at school, and you'll have all day to talk to her tomorrow. So hang up that phone now. Sister did as she was told. Later at dinner, brother and sister got into a little more trouble. Peas and mashed potatoes again, said brother, under his breath. And what, Papa asked, is wrong with peas and mashed potatoes? Brother was about to answer that. They had been, they had them three days in a row, but he thought better of it. Instead, he began counting his spearing, his spearing peas on his fork. One, two, three, four. What are you doing, sis asked. Trying to see how many peas I can get onto my fork at one time, he answered. While brother was counting peas, sister was working on her mashed potatoes. She patted them into a little mountain and then was using her spoon. She pressed a cup into the top. Pour it right there, she said. When Mama offered her gravy, what in the world, commented Mama. Well, you see, said sister, it's a volcano and the gravy is going to be the lava and flow down the sides. That will be quite enough of volcanoes and counting peas, shouted Mama. Food is not to eat. Food is to eat, not to play with. Gee whiz, said Brother. We're just trying to make it interesting. Food isn't supposed to be interesting, roared Papa. It's supposed to be food. Brother and sister went to bed that night and got up the next morning without much of fuss. But the trouble started again at breakfast. Oh, yes, Brother said suddenly remembering something we'll be getting we'll be getting the late bus home this afternoon because late bus interrupted mama i was planning our visit to grand after school but mama he proceeded we're staying late to plan for parents night talent show next friday parents night she said first i've heard of it and friday is my chest night with farmer ben complained papa here's a notice i brought home said sis digging into her bag I forgot to give it to you. Me too, mother brother. Why, this notice is a week old, said Mama. Forgot? Forgot, roared Papa. Why, you cubs would forget your heads if they weren't attached to your shoulders. Phew, breathed the brother as he fell into the seat beside his cousin Fred on the school bus. Tough morning, asked Fred. Tough? You better believe it, said sister, taking the seat Lizzie had saved for her. The four compared notes on the way to school. The cubs agreed that while there was no doubt that their parents loved them, they were a little difficult to get along with sometimes. They nagged, they said no a lot, and they never wanted the cubs to have any fun. Hey, said brother as they got off the bus, what are we going to do for parents' night talent show? I don't know, said Lizzie. Let's think about it. That afternoon, the auditorium was filled with the Cubs getting ready for the show. Babs Bruno was playing her violin. Queenie McBear was practicing her pirouettes. Too Tall and his gang were working on a rap number, which Teacher Bob didn't look too happy about. Brother, sister, Fred, and Lizzie didn't have an idea yet. 
But as they searched their brains, Brother snapped his fingers and said, I've got it. Remember what we were talking about on the bus this morning? Sure, said Fred. We were saying how grown-ups can be a big pain. Well, said Brother, let's play on that, about that, and call it the trouble with grown-ups. Shouted all the others. Sensational, said Sister. They slapped hands, delighted at the idea of showing parents how hard it is being a cub. But putting on a play is easier said than done. You have to write it, figure out who's going to play the parts, then memorize it. Then you have to worry about costumes and scenery. The Cubs did all that. It was hard, but it was fun, and they, and they did it all in secret. Costumes for Fred and Lizzie were easy. They were going to be brother and sister, so they just borrowed the extra, their extra clothes. Getting costumes for brother and sister wasn't so simple because they would be playing their own mama and papa. They managed by getting Gran into, into the, into, in on the secret. She was a wizard with the sewing machine, and she had made them great-looking little mama and papa costumes. The four practiced their parts, and before they knew it, it was time for the big parents' big parents' night talent show. There was a lot of talent at the Bear Country School, and all the acts did pretty well, but it was Brother, Sister, and Fred and Lizzie's play that was the hit of the show. I'm Papa Bear, and I'm going to relax in my easy chair after a hard day and read my paper. Yipe, somebody stole my sports page. Help, murder, police, somebody stole my sports page. Here it is, Papa. I didn't steal it. I just borrowed it. It's disgraceful. That's what it is. Cubs have it too easy they, today. They have everything handed to them. I used to walk to school 20 miles blinded in snowstorms. But Papa, don't but Papa me. Hello. Hi, Lizzie. Sister Barrett, get off that phone. I'm expecting a very important call. Who from? Who from? Who from? How am I supposed to know who from? But Mama, don't Mama me. The audience of parents laughed and laughed, and they saw how they seemed to their cubs. Mama laughed until tears rolled down her cheeks. Papa laughed too, but not as much as Mama. They both thought the play, which was a big surprise to them, was very well done. They admitted it had helped them understand what it was like being a cub. The next morning, Mama and Papa had a bit of surprise for their cubs. They might even say a shock. Mama, who was a sewing wizard herself, had made grown-up sized pink jumper. Wearing it, she looked like a huge sister bear. She even had a pink bow. Papa, wearing a red pajama top and blue bottoms, looked like a gigantic brother bear. The cubs were confused. It, it's very simple, explained Mama. You helped us understand what it's like being cubs. By pretending we're the cubs and you're the grown-ups, we're going to show you what it's like being parents. Before brother and sister could say a word, mom and papa began acting like cubs. Where's breakfast? I'm hungry, shouted papa. I hope we're not having that gro gooey oatmeal again, screamed mama. Ooey gooey oatmeal, ooey gooey oatmeal, shouted papa, jumping up and down. Brother and sister, brother pulled sister into the living room where they could hear themselves talk, but the living room was another shock. There were things all over the floor, not toys, which they sometimes left lying about, but strange things like vacuum cleaner, mama's sewing basket, Papa's chainsaw and his wrench set. What a mess. The cubs understood Mom and Papa were showing them what it was like having to pick up after them. Mom and Papa ran through the mess and headed for the front door. Brother cried, Please don't bang that. But it was too late. Papa banged the door so hard it shook the house. Brother began to smile. Sister began to giggle. They went out and stooped. They went out on the stoop. There were cubs... There were Cubs, Mama and Papa reporting, uh, uh, sporting about on the lawn. Mama's jump rope, Papa's trying to kick turns around Brother's skateboard. But their feet got tangled and they sprawled head over heels on the grass. Pretty soon they were all laughing so hard their sides ached. Later when Papa, later, later when they were back to being themselves, said Papa said, I have a better idea how cubs feel now, Mama agreed. Brother and sister admitted they had a better idea how parents feel too. Boy, said brother, you sure too know how to act like cubs. After all, we were cubs once ourselves, said Mama. And here's a thought. You'll be grown up someday, and each probably have cubs of your own. Brother and sister thought about that for a moment. They looked at each other, and then they looked off into the distance and thought about it. It was something to think about.